please look at the screen. Um, for those who are not able to log in yet, maybe you can pair with the partner beside you first while you wait for the sign up to continue. Alright, so let's take a look at this. Um, Wendy, you don't want to. I'm blocking them. <laughs> yeah, alright. My screen looks different from yours, okay? Because I'm a little bit more ancient. Um, so yours is the newer version. But it should sort of work in a similar manner. I think the layout is pretty similar. What you have here is the file browser over here on the left, all right? Over here is where you visualize your file, which means you can view the content of your file. And below here is what we call the console. So whenever you're doing programming, um, you'll be typing a lot, all right? So I've done this before to um, kids, uh, secondary school kids. And the feedback that they gave me after that is that, wow, I have to type so much. Ah. It's like, they didn't know they have to type so much. Okay, so you will have to type a lot. But before we type a lot, let me explain what is this console over here. So whenever you're interacting with the machine, what you're probably familiar with right now is GUI, GUI, Graphical User Interface, right? Using your mouse, you scroll over, you point, 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 click, 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 you don't have to do so much typing. But whenever you are using a mouse, you are, you know, uh, clicking on something, you are actually interacting with the machine, your laptop, your computer, and giving it certain instructions for it to do some work. For example, right now, if let's say you point your mouse to your, for Mac will be Finder, right? For Windows would be your File Explorer and you double click it. Your Finder would appear, or your Windows Explorer would appear, right? You are sort of opening up your, your uh, folder so that you can see what are the files inside. Very fast and quick, right? But before the GUI came about, um, we actually had to type in order for us to tell the machine that, hey, we want to look at the files in the folder. Can you tell me what it is? So when we're doing programming, we have to go down back to that level because we cannot use GUI. We have to actually know some of these commands to interact with the machine. And these are some of the commands we're gonna learn right now, all right? So this console over here, you see that you have this cursor, right? This is where you can start typing some commands to the machine. Where is this machine? So this machine right now is not your laptop in front of you. It's actually somewhere in the cloud, in the internet. Somewhere where you don't know where is it, right? I also don't know where is it. <laughs> by somewhere. So your machine is there. So we're issuing commands to your machine. Um, this is the first command that I want you to learn. It is called... LS. Alright? So type LS in... over here. What do you see? I don't know, correct? What, what does it mean? Code. Right? Code. Do all of you have code? Oh, it's still loading. Okay. Do all of you see something? No? Oh, still loading. Oh, okay, still loading. Okay, okay, okay. For those who have already loaded, do you see it return you something? If you type ls, yes? It give me some response there. <laughs> yes, huh? Okay, so basically what you have done is to ask the machine, can you list me the files that are currently in this folder, right? This folder over here, where you are. So that's what it's telling you. So for example, what it's telling me is that I have one file called readme.md and this is highlighted in purple because it is a folder. That means right now you're somewhere, you're looking at a file and another folder. Can you visualize how it looks like in your file, in your explorer or finder? Right, you can visualize, right? You see a file and then you see a folder. So if you itchy hand, you'll go and click the folder again to go into the folder, right? So without having the GUI, 
This is what it tells us, so you can still interpret that. <coughs> now, how do we know which current folder we are in? We are somewhere, right? We are somewhere. So some of you already know the answer. What is it? PWD. So if you type PWD, it should return you sort of this syntax, slash something, slash something. What does PWD stands for? What? Personal something. What is it? Present Working Directory. Yes. Alright, so it stands for something. Present Working Directory. So this is your present working directory. It means that I'm in slash home slash action. So all of these are folders, right? It's very easy to imagine that this is a folder, you're in the folder home, you're in the folder action, and in this folder action, you actually have two files, right? So for most of you, you probably have only one other folder in your present working directory when you did a list just now, which is CODE code. Am I right? The, the back row, is it code? So now I want you to navigate into that folder. So what you would normally do if you have a GUI would be double click. Am I right? Double click, you open up the folder, you're navigating into that folder. So how do you do it if you do not have a GUI? I cannot, it's not touch screen. <laughs> you have to type commands, right? So we can type a command. The command is cd space and then you type in the name of the directory. So for you it would be code. For me it's workspace. Enter. You don't need the slash, just cd code. Enter. Does it work? Yeah. What does cd stand for? Um, no. Yeah. So she got the right answer. Yes. Uh, change directory. Yeah, so it's change directory. Right? So it all means something. So now you know that you can change directory to go inside the directory. Now how do you see what is in that directory? How do you see what is in that directory? LS, right? You just learn it. So you can do LS again and see what is in that directory. LS stands for list, L I S T. Mm. All right. So, uh, no, 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 it's okay. This is my, yeah, stuff. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. You'll probably see something different. It's okay because every machine is different, right? So, LS doesn't tell us a lot about the folder, right? I only know that I have one file and three directories and that's because I remember what they are based on the color. How do I find out more about the file, about the folder? If you have a GUI, remember you could actually sort of right click and say view time created, sort by uh, modifier, who, who created this, etc, etc, right? Size of the file. So we also want to know this from the console itself. <laughs> so we can do more. We can actually issue um, a command, right? Or rather an option to this list command to let it tell us more about what we have in the directory. So the command is ls space dash l all right ls space dash l with that then you can actually see a lot more um, things about the files or folder itself i'm not going to go through in detail what uh, all of these things stands for right it's a little bit more advanced but what you can see here is that this is the date it was um, created and this is sort of the file size this is like the raw byte size so if you want to know in megabytes and gigabytes you have to issue it some other option so that it will convert it for you 
So GUI is very good because it gives you um, the sort of calculated um, value that makes sense to a human being, right? All of these, it's not so friendly. But sometimes we need some of these numbers over here. Okay? So now, what you have just learned are some simple commands to interact with the machines. We haven't typed any Ruby code yet, right? So you see that we need to know how to interact with the machine first. What I'm gonna do right now is to give you five minutes of instant gratification so that you see you can put up a server very easily. All right, so just follow my command. So now you are probably in the code directory. I want you uh, I want you to do this. Okay, I want you to create this new application. So I want you to type Rails space new space shoppergram. So what is shoppergram? So let's build this shoppergram together. Um, so shoppergram is like Instagram, except that instead of your beautiful pictures, you take pictures of what you want to buy instead. Okay, so it's like your shopping list Instagram. All right. So please type this. Rails space new space shoppergram. All right, and type. Enter. Something is running, right? Do you all see that something is running? Is it running? Uh, yeah, my coaches, can you all help anyone who cannot get it to work? Is it running for you? Cookie? Oh, everyone looking at the same thing, huh? Okay. Then, so it's running. So what is it actually running? So what you are doing right now is you have issued a Rails command. This Rails command is actually newing up a server. Alright? It's creating a new Rails application for you to use. Um, it's pretty complex. Uh, but it's okay not to know all of these right now. Uh, we're just going to go through the basic steps and see that it works, right? Before we come back again to understand how it all uh, actually is. All right? So it's done for mine. What you would eventually see uh, would be, you know, completed uh, something. Do all of you see that? Yes? Okay, do all of you see that? Back row? Not yet? Can we help them? Come on, the back row? Yeah. Second row before the back. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't connect. Oh, okay, okay. So sorry. Still running, but okay, you can, no worries. Why are you not doing Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Oh, okay. Back row. Third row, okay, huh? Oh, here, okay? Oh, wonder. What? What's it? Oh, oh no. Okay, okay, okay. No, no. I'm 
Back row, back row still got problems. Ah, real steel or is real steel? Okay. Okay, while, while Audrey helps to figure out all those who are still having problems to log in, right? For those who are already here at this stage, I want to backtrack a little bit. Okay, remember I talked about if you want to do Ruby on Rails, you actually need to install a bunch of stuff on your machine, right? Which is Ruby, which is Rails. So with Nitroist, you actually skip the step of installing. They help you install, right? How do you know that it's on a machine? We can find out if Ruby and Rails are on the machine or not. Actually, you already know that Rails is on the machine because it just ran the command for Rails. But what about Ruby? It should work, lah, but let's verify. So I want you to type this command. I want you to type Ruby dash space dash V. Okay? You should be able to see the version of the Ruby that you have installed on your machine. Next, I want you to verify the version of Rails installed on your machine as well. So we're going to type this. Rails dash V. So for me, I have 4.1. What do you have? 4.2, okay. 4.2, okay. Good. So I have 4.1, you all have 4.2. So this allows you to verify that the box already has this. So if not, you will have to go through manual steps of installing Ruby and installing Rails. Then after that, coming back to verify that all of these are in your machine already. Alright? Okay. Can we proceed? Yeah. Uh, do we still have problems behind? Uh, the bundle install is done, right? The bundle is uh, Rails new is done, right? Is Rails new done behind? Last row. Scott, is there any problem? Third row is okay, right? Okay, continue, huh? Quickly, huh? Yeah? Alright, so just now you have created your application. Now I want you to type ls again. When you type ls, you should be able to see Shopagram somewhere. Now I want you to go into the directory. So how do you go into the directory? So you do cd space shopagram. Right? Okay, cd space shopagram. Okay. Okay, once you are inside, we are now going to boot up the real server. Okay? To verify that, hey, we have a real server available for us. So let's type this. Real space server. Enter. You should be able to see these following messages. Once you have that, I want you to click on preview. Do you have a preview button? Yeah, so click on preview, go to port 3000. Do you see this page? Do you see this page? <laughs> ok, 
Okay, because you're using Rails 4.2, you actually have to issue this command instead. Okay, you have to type this command instead. Real server dash b 0.0.0.0. All right, because your version is Real 4.2. Now after you do this, click on preview again. Do you get this? Yes? Okay. Got it? Okay. So what does this mean? This means that your server is running. How do you know? I might be lying to you, right? So I want you to go back to Nitros again and press Ctrl C to kill the server. Alright, you might need to click on it and then press Ctrl C to kill the server. So once you kill the server, you should be in the directory again. Right? Now, try to refresh the same page. You wouldn't be able to see that page already. Alright? So this is the part where you know that, hey, that was my server running. Um, but it's no longer running now. Alright? Any problems over here? All good? Final row? Okay? Okay, wait a wait a Okay. All good? Behind? Alright. Now for the five minutes gratification. Alright? Have a five, five minutes gone already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we want to create a shopagram. Which means it will probably contain some information. Right? Let's start it simple. Lah. Okay, let's say our shopagram only has our shopping list of items that we want to add. That means it will contain, let's say, I want to buy grocery. I want to buy shampoo, I want to buy conditioner, right? I want to buy fruits, etc. So I probably have a shopping list, right? Or items, let's just call it items, shopping items that I want to create. So back in our console, after you have killed your server, I want you to type this. Can you see? Oh, sorry, sorry. Generate scaffold. Sorry, yeah. So I must get them to type properly. Okay, rails, generate, scaffold, shopping items, names, colon, string. Okay, as some of you have noticed earlier, when you are doing the try Ruby, um, we are not really typing, or even though a lot of it looks like English, but we are not really typing English, we are typing instructions to the machine. So, all the spaces, all the punctuations are very important. Um, they cannot be wrong, they cannot be different. If you replace the type with a square bracket or vice versa, it will totally be wrong already. So similar, same as this. All these spaces here are important. This underscore is important as well. And this colon is important too. So you need to follow exactly. And this is what we call is the syntax. Right? This is the syntax of the programming language. So every programming language has a different syntax, but this is the syntax for Ruby. So if you type enter, it should do a lot of things again. Am I right? Am I right? Back row okay? 
Alicia, okay? Okay, huh? So now, where is your web application, right? Wow, it took so long. Evan. Okay, let's start the server again. So you can just press the up key. You press up, 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 you know, it will cycle through your previous commands. And find this command again to restart your server. Now, if you start your server, I want you to preview your application again. Uh, something wrong, right? Do all of you see this? Yes, something wrong. So what is wrong? Okay, so remember I, I told you about um, database? So database is your basket to store your items. It's like your Excel spreadsheet. This Excel spreadsheet is not initialized yet. It doesn't know about your columns. Right? Because Excel spreadsheet on is have columns, right? So it doesn't know about it yet. Which is why it's throwing you an error. It say, hey, tell me more about it. Alright? So what I want to do right now is to go back, um, kill the server again with control C. And type this command, rig db colon migrate so this is initializing your excel spreadsheet and telling your excel spreadsheet that hey these are the columns i need in my excel spreadsheet all right so rig space db colon migrate and then you type enter And you can see that what it's trying to do is it's creating the table called shopping items and it's actually putting the attribute name into the shopping items table. That means it's like creating a spreadsheet, right? Sheet 1. Sheet 1 will be called shopping items. It's going to add a column called name to that. Okay? So we initialize our spreadsheet already, our database. Now go back and start your server once more. Alright, start your server again. So if you press the up key, it cycles through your previous commands. So try that and then enter. Now preview your web page again, your, your web application. You see this again, right? Eh? Nothing special, like I'm lying. Okay, not really. This is your default index page. We call it index page, root page. We have not changed this page yet. But actually, the commands that we have typed earlier already gave us something special. It's just not shown here. But we can navigate to it. How do we navigate to it? This is a website already. This is a web application. Right? You can see that for me, I'm pointed to I'm talented 2024222 blah 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 blah. Yours should be something else. So this is your URL. So Facebook also has a URL. If you want to go to your friend's Facebook feed, what do you type? You type your friend's name, right? Facebook.com slash Michael Ching, for example. Okay? So now, we want to go to the shopping items page that we have created. So we modify the URL. And you add slash shopping items and you should see this shopping shopping underscore items remember uh, the naming is important uh, shopping underscore items so go to your URL go to that URL right here and add slash shopping underscore items Items, items, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Third row, okay? Okay. Can shopping underscore items, huh? Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Okay. So you, you see that you have already created this page. Now I want you to go play around with this page. What, what can you do with this page? You can click on new shopping item.
and you can actually add a name for the shopping item. I want you to go ahead and add. Try it out, try it out. Add something. What do you want to buy? Does it work? Does it work? Yes? So this is now your personal shopping basket. You can use this already. Right? So this is the 5 minutes gratification. You have your web server, you can add something to it and it's persistent, it's stored. You can share the link with your friends, your friends can open it up, they can see this as well. So in five minutes, you have a real server ready for you to use. All right? So it's very simple for us to get started in Ruby on Rails and to actually start building a web application. Of course, this is just the beginning. So what I'm showing you is a quick demo of how fast it can be if you do things properly, if you do things correctly. Of course, as a beginner, if I'm not here to help you, you'll be figuring this out and probably spend a day doing it. Right? But this is what we want to do to expose you to how easy it can be to get started. It might not be very impressive yet because you do not have styling, you do not have colors, everything. But those, we can add it on easily. Uh, so to give some context, if you don't use this real scaffold to actually generate uh, Tanya, 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 <laughs> pizza. Yeah. Um, to illustrate, if you don't use this scaffold command to actually generate um, these things, right? You will actually need probably longer um, if you do it in other languages uh, or even Ruby itself uh, to actually get up all of these actions. So these actions, right, we broadly call them CRUD, C-R-U-D. Why is it called CRUD? Because it's create, read, update, delete. So you have all of these actions already. You can create, you can read, you can update, you can delete. So this is what we call CRUD. So to do CRUD in other, in, in, if you do it by scratch, it will take you maybe a day or half a day if you are fast to get all of these done. But with Ruby on Rails, with this command, you can do it in 5 minutes or even less. If you really count how long it took, it's probably less than 5 minutes. Alright? Any questions so far? Questions? Crap? Other oh, no products? So, okay, for example, you see, ah, uh, I can delete the food over here. Alright, it's gone. I can add. Pizza. I click back. Again, it shows up here. I can edit. And rename this to something else. Um, what else can I buy? Cake. Now it changes. So I have all the updates, all the actions that is very common for something in the database, for something in an Excel spreadsheet. Create, read, update, delete, crack. All right. So this is what you can do with just five minutes with Ruby on Rails. Yes. How do we? Okay. Alright, so play around with it, play around with it. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope you are impressed. I was pretty impressed when I did it for the first time. 
Any questions so far? Any questions? No one? Huh? So some people call this magic because if you count the total number of characters that you have just keyed in, it's less than 100 in order to get this up and running, right? Yes, yeah, less coding achieves more, that's right. So some people call this magic. Um, some people like magic, some people don't like magic. Because some people feel that they don't understand magic, you know, they're afraid of magic. And so they, 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 they would prefer to have more control over what they are doing. So there's two schools of thoughts over here. But again, like I said, it's convention over configuration. So sometimes if you understand what the conventions are, you follow it properly, you won't have any problems with it. If you try and fight the conventions, then of course problems will come in. If you are advanced, you can definitely overcome the problems. But if you are not, you will probably you know, be faced with an obstacle, a roadblock. Alright? Okay. I'm going to stop here for a while. Um, if you do not have any questions. Any questions? Kuzi, any questions? Why do we need to kill the server? Okay, very good question. So someone asked me, why do we need to kill the server? When the server loads, um, it would actually load a lot of stuff into memory, right? Sometimes um, these stuff are loaded in memory, they don't refresh automatically. So you need to kill the server, do some operations before you load the server again so that it reloads the new stuff into memory. So sometimes that's why we have to do that. Mm. Any other questions? Uh, is it similar to how you clear the cache on your browser? Um, in a certain extent, yes. It's sort of killing the server, flushing the memory and rebooting it again. Mm. Any questions? Any any question from this side? No? Good? Okay. Any questions from this side? No? Any questions? No? 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 Any questions? Not today. Yeah. Okay, so the question is... Okay, so someone asked me the question, uh, will we learn everything else about the framework then? The answer is, not today. Today is meant to give you all a taster of how to get started. Confidence in doing programming. It's not difficult. You can do it as well. Programming is just 2 plus 6, right? It's just knowing an array, knowing a string, knowing hash, and manipulating all of these together. When you come for future Rails Girl sessions, we will continue to dig into the internals and do more things with the framework, with Ruby. Uh, that's where you will learn more. Alright? So what's next would be for you all to continue to come back, or even if you are already inspired by all of these, but you feel that, you know, Ruby is not good for you, it's not really for you, you want to go to something else, like other languages, then you know, you can continue to springboard yourself. Okay, at this point in time, um, I have actually invited uh, Badehi, who is our speaker at break.rubycom, um, for the last two days as well, um, to sort of give all of us, you know, a talk. Uh, she's going to share her experience um, where she learned Ruby, she learned Ruby on Rails in the boot camp for three months.
Vadehi. Yeah, yeah. So Vadehi is going to come and share her experience. Uh, you know, learning from a boot camp in New York, it's called Flat Iron School, uh, for three months at a full time basis, and her experience with it. And hopefully, it will inspire some of you to do some of these boot camps as well, be 